We know the universe is approximately 13.7 billion years and may go on for trillions of years. How do you project forward the intelligence we know we have today? How will this develop in this universe over these trillions of years? We have two contrasting images. One is where life arose on Earth and then intelligence just sort of came like a spark out of nowhere and was snuffed out within the twinkling of a cosmic eye. Uh, and I'm using intelligence to mean beings sufficiently advanced that they could come to understand the world, not just observe it. So maybe the, the last few thousand years would correspond to that and maybe we're going to be wiped out. And that's it. And, and maybe the entire history of the universe, you've just got this one planet and this one little sliver of time where beings arose that could put their finger on the pulse of the cosmos and discern the rules on which it runs. What an extraordinary thing that would be. That's one contrast. The other extreme would be where somehow life and intelligence are widespread in the universe and they spread out more and more and more. And there's plenty of time available. People think, uh, oh, well, um, the universe is very old and uh, maybe we're near the end of it, but not, not a bit of it. Uh, there could well be trillions upon trillions of years in which uh, life and intelligence could flourish. Indeed, it could go on forever, we just don't know. And so we can certainly imagine that there's plenty of time for life to spread across the galaxy. We can imagine our descendants building large spacecraft, and even if they travel at the modest speeds we can achieve now, they'd still cross the galaxy in a, a tiny fraction of the age of the galaxy. So there's really nothing in principle that I can see that would limit the spread of life and mind right across the cosmos. And so that uh, conjures up the alternative image of a universe in the very far future saturated with mind, uh, maybe even saturated with technology, that it's all brought under the control of uh, our descendants or the descendants of, of alien beings. Uh, and uh, in a sense, it doesn't matter whether it all comes from us or, or comes from the, multiple no, places. At some point, matter. because you have enough time, at some point, it will become saturated with intelligence. Does this change the character of what the universe is itself? I, I believe that if life and mind are real cosmic forces, then it does change the way we look at the universe. It could be that today uh, these are fairly insignificant effects in terms of uh, the great scheme of things, that we don't see evidence around the galaxy of uh, anything being significantly reshaped. But it's early days, and we could well imagine that in the far future there would be very significant changes in the character of the galaxy and then the universe as a whole. So at the end of the day, yes, of course it would matter, because if the universe is about uh, realizing its own mental potential or something, if it's going to end up uh, in effect, a mental as a, well as a physical phenomenon, then that completely changes the character of things. I, I, we, we wouldn't view the universe again the same way if we knew it was going to end up uh, becoming the, a supermind or whatever. And does it. this impart a kind of meaning or purpose in the universe, perhaps different than traditional theology, but a, a new kind of meaning or purpose? Well, you're right to say this is different from uh, traditional theology, because we're talking here, first of all, about a natural phenomenon. We're talking about mind uh, emerging from the universe and uh, growing and uh, spreading out in, in the far future. But curiously, through the sort of strange backwards causation that's possible in quantum physics, in a sense, it's there at the beginning too. So this is a, an alternative view of, uh, I don't know whether we call this a spiritual dimension, uh, a mental dimension, certainly, to, uh, to the nature of the universe. Um, but, it, but in particular, it's an evolutionary view. It's one that's going to change with time, because the state of affairs I'm talking about, in which, uh, in which mind is spread across the universe, that hasn't happened yet. Now, some of our theological friends would listen uh, and smile uh, pleasantly and say that this vision of reality is a synthetic, impoverished version of the richness of a true theology. Right. I wouldn't uh, pretend to say I've worked out a complete theology here because I'm just uh, speculating. I should say these are extreme speculations about 
the way in which life and mind could affect the universe in the far, far future. We're just looking at logical possibilities, and I can't see any fundamental reason why life and mind can't uh, just spread and spread and spread. Maybe that won't happen, but I hope it will happen. Uh, but it's not uh, a theology in any sort of worked out sense of the term. Uh, and uh, I suppose the closest that it comes to a theological position might be that of Tao de Jardin and his uh, Omega Point uh, God. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, uh, you know, this is uh, what I'm coming at this from the point of view of science. And so, uh, from my point of view, what matters is what is scientifically plausible or possible and not what some preconceived idea of theology might be. So I'm a great fan of, uh, of a constructive dialogue between science and theology, but I think it's important not to have made up your theological mind in advance and then shoehorn the scientific facts to fit it. I just want to follow the science where it goes. And then if that leads to some theological conclusions, then that's fine. But I wouldn't want uh, in advance to say, well, the theologians got here beforehand, so I better see what they have to say. Oh yes, we better make sure that the science complies with this or that uh, theological position.